Hi guys, welcome to another chemical engineering tutorial brought to you by the ChemEng student. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the design derivation for a non-isothermal CSTR uh, reactor. So we are going to look at the complete design uh, equations for the mass and the energy balances um, for both the isothermal and non-isothermal and we'll take it a step further and we'll look at the adiabatic and non-adiabatic systems as well. Now, a reminder that we do have a question for our September competition where you can win £500 every month for an entire year. So be sure to check out that question at the end of this tutorial. So if we consider the isothermal CSTR mass balance first, then what we're going to do is we'll use the general mass balance, which is the accumulation, will be equal to what comes in minus out plus or minus the reaction plus or minus transfer. Now it's important to remember what isothermal actually means. So isothermal simply means that we do not have a change with, of the temperature within our given system. So we operate at a constant temperature. So if we have isothermal conditions, then we don't require an energy balance. Now, a couple of assumptions that we're going to make here is that we are under steady state conditions. So therefore, what comes into the system will leave the system. So that means there is no accumulation. So that means we can neglect this term. Now we'll also assume there is no mass or energy transfer to the system. So what we can do is we can rewrite this as the input equals what comes out plus the reaction. Now what we can then express here is we can have F0, which is the initial flow rate, multiplied by the initial concentration. So F0, CA0, is equal to the outlet flow rate and the outlet concentration plus or minus the rate of the reaction multiplied by the volume of our system. Now one of the things that we can assume here is based under steady state is that F0 will equal F. So therefore we can actually just rewrite this as F. Now what we can then do is divide all three terms by F. And what that would do is that would cancel that F and that F so we'd have CA0 equals CA plus or minus minus RAV over F. Now what we can then do is just account for when we've done the, the plus here. Um, we can account for that and we can express our final concentration in terms of the initial concentration. So what we've done is just rearrange this to get CA equals CA0 minus minus RAV over F. Now, the V over F has a special name, and that will feature at the end of this video, so make sure you watch all the way to the end to find out more about this V over F term. So that is essentially the isothermal mass balance. Now, for the non-isothermal CSTR, what we're going to do is we're going to expand on the mass balance from the isothermal derivation, because what we need to do here is express the equation as a function of conversion as well. So what we can do from here is we can apply this very useful correlation between the final concentration and the initial concentration. Now we can prove this using a species table, um, and we do have some uh, tutorials on how to carry out species tables um, that I'll put a link in the description to our mass and energy balance um, section as well. But here, what we're basically saying is that the final concentration is going to be 1 minus the conversion multiplied by the initial concentration. So what we can then do is replace CA with this, now we've eliminated an, the variable CA, and now we can collect the CA naughts, and we now have this in terms of conversion. So if we multiply out this bracket, then we get CA naught minus CA naught X. So that CA naught we cancel with that, and we'd be left with CA naught X equals minus RAV over F. Now the delta X here, you don't necessarily need the delta. It's just saying that delta X A would be the change in the concentration between the initial and the final. 
But again, normally you would just be told the conversion is, say, 50%. So you would just write 0.5. Now again, we can assume steady state conditions, and this will simplify our energy balance equation. So if we consider adiabatic conditions first, so adiabatic conditions means that we have no energy or mass transfer to or from the surroundings. So imagine this is a reactor. Non-isothermal means that the temperature within the reactor will vary. Adiabatic conditions, we could assume that we have a jacket on a reactor, so we don't have any heat or mass coming in or out of the system for adiabatic conditions. Now what we can assume here is that steady state, so accumulation, we can neglect the work term, right, because the, the work will be negligible in comparison to the other terms, and we don't have any transfer, because we don't have any heat or mass transfer taking place to or from the system. So now, what we can then express is, when we talk about energy in and energy out, we're referring here to enthalpy. So this will be the enthalpy in minus enthalpy out, plus or minus, now this is the um, heat of the reaction, so delta HR, multiplied by the rate, multiplied by the volume. So if we then take this a step further, then what we can say here is we can express the enthalpy as the following. So it's going to be the flow rate multiplied by the density, multiplied by the specific heat capacity, multiplied by the change in the temperature. Now, Hn will be T0, so that's the temperature that comes into the system. So that would be, say, at this point. So this would be the in, and this would be the out. So from here, but we have to account for a reference temperature. Now, we'll deal with the reference temperature in just a second, but for now, we need to account for it. We do the same thing, but for the outs, so we have F rho Cp and then delta T, and then we just keep this um, the same. Now again, we'll do that trick where we assume steady state conditions, so F naught we will write as F, so we now get this type of system here. Now, to make life easy, we'll take the reference temperature as zero, because then what we can do is we can actually get rid of the TRs. So we end up with a system that looks like this. Now, what I'll do is to make the, the maths a bit easier, we'll bring this entire term across and that'll just bring it over and make it positive. Because essentially what we want to do is we want to know what the final temperature is going to be relative to the initial temperature. So we need to isolate this T. So what we now need to do is get rid of the F, the rho, the Cp. And the way that we do that is we simply divide both of these terms by F rho Cp. Now we can also apply another trick here. Because, so if I come back here first, the trick that we can apply is we can assume that the physical properties of our um, system are constant. So therefore we can say that rho naught equals rho and that Cp naught equals Cp. So what actually happens is that cancels with that, that cancels with that, and that cancels with that. So what we're left with is this equation here. So that is our uh, energy balance derivation for a non-isothermal adiabatic CSTR. Now we're almost there, but we have to incorporate the mass balance as we mentioned before. So what we can do this time is we can replace the minus Ra V over F with Ca0 delta X, because that's what we had in the, uh, the mass balance. Because again, we want this in terms of conversion. So the only way that we know how to do that is by having expressed the mass balance in terms of conversion, we can now replace the minus Ra V and F with Ca0 delta x. So our um, temperature for the energy balance would give us T equals T0 plus or minus the of reaction initial concentration multiplied by x divided by rho Cp. And that's why we assume that these the density and the Cp are constant, so that's why we don't need to distinguish between the inlet and the outlet. 
Now, the non-adiabatic conditions now incorporate the transfer term. So we're going to keep the same energy equation, but we're now going to, instead of cancelling out the energy transfer term, we're now going to consider it. But here, all we need to do is consider it independently, and we'll just combine it with the previous equation. Because the energy transfer term is the equation Q equals UA delta T. Where this time, delta T is going to be the temperature of our reactor, and TS is the temperature of the surroundings. So it's either going to be to or from the surroundings, dependent on what type of reaction we have. So from here, this is when we brought across our um, outlet term. So we have our F rho CP. This was our inlet term. This was our reaction. And now we've just brought in our transfer term. So we perform exactly the same thing as before. Remember that these will cancel each other out, like so. We will be able to replace these with CA not delta X, and then we just have this term included here. So if we go for that, then we end up with this equation here. Now again, we can express the delta X if you want, like this, or you could just keep that as the CA not X. Either or is acceptable. It just depends on the information that you have been given within the question. But that's the different ways that you can express uh, the change in the concentration, uh, sorry, the conversion. So now it is your chance to enter our monthly competition, whereby we give away to one lucky um, subscriber £500 every single month for an entire year. Now, these questions, um, we have another video for the September draw. I'll put a link in the description to that. That is about how to use the Cox uh, diagram for vapour pressure uh, systems. The questions are incredibly straightforward, so be sure to get your answer commented and make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel as well. But for this video, to enter the competition, all you have to do is answer the following question correctly. And the question is, what is the name given to the term V over F that features within the mass balance? So that's the term whereby we had the CA, uh, sorry, the minus RA V over F. So what we're talking about is this V over F. Now, I'll give you a hint. We can express V over F as tau. So what is the name of that um, parameter. We can simplify this and this has a specific name. So all we need to do is comment the correct answer, like the video and subscribe to the channel. And only valid subscribers with the correct answer will be entered into the draw. Now the winner will be announced on our Facebook page. Um, I'll also put a link in the description to that. So be sure that you like and subscribe to our Facebook channel so as that you can check out if you have one or not. So the video that you comment your answer here, the other videos for the September draw, you will get multiple entries as well. So the more um, videos that you comment on, the more entries that you will have. So that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful in understanding and how to model uh, non-isothermal CSTRs, both for adiabatic and non-adiabatic. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us reach as many chemical engineering students as possible. Thank you for your time and we hope to see you in another video.